Hey everyone, it's good to be back. As you probably didn't even notice, I've been gone for quite a while. I could go into all the reasons why, but really nobody cares. But I'm back now, and outside of a few trips I've got planned between now and the end of the year, I'm going to try and get back to posting content regularly. I've got a lot of concepts brewing that I'm looking forward to sharing with all of you, especially Halloween-themed ones. Too many to get out before Halloween even, so like last year, I'll be continuing on with those ideas past the holiday itself. For this video though, I've got a Star Wars themed image for you. This idea evolved while I was watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi show since my mind was constantly wandering while I was watching it to more interesting Star Wars imagery than most anything going on in that show. On a side note, I'm actually enjoying the writing and slow burn of Andor, which has been as much a surprise to me as it has been to a lot of fans. Since fans have kind of come to expect so little from Disney and the Star Wars property at this point, it's just been so nice to see them doing something right for a change. Anyway, hope you enjoy the breakdown of how I created this piece. The next video I upload will be a time lapse of the complete process, so if you're interested in seeing that, make sure to like and subscribe and ring that little bell so you get notified when it goes up. Alright, let's begin. Alright, so I began by dropping in a snowy ground image and masking away the background. Behind that layer, I dropped in the mountains I wanted to use and masked away the sky. I clipped a curves adjustment to that and brightened the mountains up just a little. Then I brought in a separate sky image and lowered its opacity by just a hair so it wasn't quite so dark and saturated. I knew I wanted a planet to be hanging in the sky somewhere. I had actually added it in here later in the process, after most of the other elements had been placed where I wanted them, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and show you that I ended up putting it here, pretty centered in the image. I moved it behind the mountains layer, masked it out, and put it on the soft light blending mode. I duplicated it and set it to the lighter color blending mode. This just made these highlights here a little brighter so the planet wasn't quite so flat. So that's good for the environment for now. Now let's start placing all these elements into it. First is the main AT-AT. Yes, I say AT-AT, not AT-AT. I never heard anyone call it that until I was well into adulthood. Now I hear it all the time and it's just not for me. Which way do you call them? Anyway, I found this image which had the right angle I wanted, but wanted the head to be looking down more at where I'll be putting the main character. Luckily I was able to get another image of the head looking more where I wanted it and swapped it in. Then just mask that out from the background. I used a textured brush to mask around the bottom of the feet here so it looked like it was stepping down to the snow with all its weight. Next I brought in an image of a snow speeder, masked it out, and used that same textured brush to make it look partly buried where it had crashed in the snow. Standing atop the wreckage here is our boy. You know him, you love him. The kid who walks upon the sky. It's Jedi, but not yet Master Luke. From behind, anyway. He's standing kind of weird, though. It's the best image I could find, but, like, why is he thrusting his pelvis forward? Is he trying to swing the Empire to death? Shrink. I used Liquify to fix that little annoyance. Continuing on, I dropped in the next AT-AT. And another. And another. Then I threw in some ATSTs, and no, I won't be referring to them as chicken walkers because I'm no longer a five-year-old. See, back then we knew what everything was called because we had to have the toys, which had all the actual names of all the vehicles and characters right there on the box. The sky was looking kind of empty, so I dropped in some menacing looking Star Destroyers. Ooh, menacing. Okay, in Empire, Luke had a lightsaber when he crashed, so let's give him one now. That'll also create another light source, which will look really good later when we start lighting everything. So, to get things started with blending these elements into the scene, they need to be roughly the same color. Hoth is a brutally, brutal, brutally, brutally cold snow planet, so everything should have a cold color. Now, what's a cold color, you ask? Hmm, blue. It's always and only blue. Next thing I need to do is make the tone of everything a little more similar. So using a mix of levels and curves, I clipped those adjustment layers as needed to each object and adjusted them until they were all matching somewhat. Now, I needed to decide where the primary light source was going to be coming from. Since the environment and most of the objects had pretty flat lighting already, that gave me the option to change it to pretty much whatever I wanted. So, looking at this AT-AT, which already had a direction of light coming from the left that would be pretty difficult to change, I decided that's where the light would come from. So, I used a curves adjustment layer, clipped it to the main AT-AT here, and lowered the brightness down quite a bit. Then just masked it in only on the side facing away from the light. Then I did the same thing on the other side, but with a brightened curves adjustment. 
then did the same thing to the next ATAT. With this one, it was already darkened enough, so I just masked away the dark adjustment layer to reveal the light beneath it. Same thing with this one. And this one. And similarly with the Star Destroyers. Use a levels, curves, or exposure adjustment layer, whichever works best, and darken one side. Then do the opposite to brighten the other side. The crashed snow speeder is dark enough already, so I just need to lighten the side facing the light source. Likewise to the super great pilot, who crashed two separate ships in the same movie. EMOTIONAL damn it! And last thing needed to complete the light shaping step are ground shadows. The final thing needed to blend all the objects into the environment is the illusion of depth. That's done by adding atmospheric haze to objects and increasing intensity the further away from the viewer they are. So beginning with this ATAT -AT way in the background here, I'll use a curves adjustment to make it look real faded. Then the same thing, working my way closer to the foreground, making things just a bit darker as they get closer and closer to the viewer. After doing this to the Star Destroyers, I used a cloud brush to make it look as though they were behind the clouds. Seeing that they're above the clouds and yet still loom so large in the sky really helps sell just how massive these things are. To further separate the crash from the approaching Imperial Army, I added a layer filled with pure white between the crash and the walkers and lowered its opacity to around 15%. Now, even though the crash speeder is the closest thing to the viewer, it still shouldn't be pure black, because there's enough distance between it and the virtual camera that we'd see some haze especially in this snowy, embattled environment. So I'll just add that with a level and curves adjustment. Everything's looking pretty well blended for now, so I want to now focus on adding in details. First thing I want to do is add something in the snow to the left of the crash speeder. So I found this image of some rocks in a snowy field and used a grungy brush to paint them in. That looks better, I think. So this is a crash snow speeder, right? So it should look a little banged up. Luckily the back already looks like it has damage from smoke or blaster fire or something, but I went ahead and dinged up one of these little fender things, whatever they are. Then brought in this cracked glass texture and masked in just the cracks. Now, what else might you see in a crash that this ship wreckage needs? I have no fire! Yeah, some fire would look awesome, and add another interesting light source. To do that, I brought in this image and set it to the screen blending mode so we just get the red and orange parts of it. Then this image of a flame also set on screen and masked in. Then an image of sparks and debris set on screen and masked in as well. Added some more debris, darkened it, and gave it some motion blur. I wanted the fire to have more color, so I added a reddish solid color adjustment set to soft light and painted a dab of reddish glow. Next I used that same adjustment layer to add light from the fire casted on the back of the figure. Then another solid color, this time more yellowish, for an overall glow. The fire would be casting bright highlights onto everything around it, so I painted those in next. Finally, the fire would also be casting an orange color on the snow beside it, so I used another solid color adjustment, this time more orangey-ish, and painted in some color there, using Blendif to keep it out of the darker areas. To turn on the lightsaber, I first drew a thin white line that tapers off at the end to be the bright core of the beam. Then I used the outer glow option in layer styles to create the green glow around that. Next I added a glow around the hilt of the saber with a green solid color adjustment, and a green cast on his pants, glove, and arm. Same for the light casted on the ship. Then I painted hard green highlights on everything that the saber's light would be casted onto. Oops, where there's fire there's smoke, so let's drop in a decent image of some smoke, use color range to select it, and use masking and opacity to blend it. Okay, we've created a real nice focal point here with these bright colors. But now, let's wake up the Imperial Army. I added some cockpit lights to the ATSTs first, then red lights to the cockpits of the ATATs. You can barely see it, but I went ahead and brightened up some of the lights on the main Star Destroyer as well. I also kind of wanted the gun barrels on the main ATAT -AT to look like they had been firing prior to setting its sights on our survivor. So I added a little bit of a glow inside. It's a minor detail that probably no one would notice without looking closely and even then probably wouldn't know what it was they were supposed to be. But whatever, little details add up to tell a story even when you don't consciously notice them. 
It was about this point I realized that I needed to add more rebels for the Empire to actually be fighting against. So here's a couple of other snow speeders. First one's coming in from up top. Like with everything else, I color corrected it to match the scene, then added the atmospheric haze and curves for highlights. With these speeders, I wanted to show movement, since they're supposed to be actually flying. So I made a copy of the ship atop the original and applied motion blur to it, then masked it out to only see the blur coming from the back. Then to turn the engines on, I first added some light to these small ports, then the main engine thrusters, and a nice glow. I've had people ask me a few times how I do these glowy glows that glow. It's a technique that apparently Max Asabin has a video on on his channel, but I haven't seen it. I'm pretty sure I first saw it in a video on the photo manipulation channel, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll be making my own video on it at some point because it really is a super useful technique. Anyway, I did all the same things for this speeder too. Now that we have these speeders added on the right side, we need to balance it out on the left. So I'll bring in some TIE Fighters, why not? Same drill, mask, color correct, darken, highlight, haze. More details you won't really see unless really looking close. Cockpit lights and the red lights on the outside. I place several more a little further back in the distance, then some more even further back. Now I felt the main ATAT -AT was looking a little too clean. It should really look like it's seen some shit. So I added some texture to it. That's looking pretty good for details. It's looking like a proper battle now. Almost. We'll add some laser fire in a minute to really get it going on. But first, let's add a bit more atmosphere by putting some haze, smoke, and fog around some areas. Now I know what you're thinking. Yo, damage, that's way too much, bro. It's all washed out now. Check it though. I'm running this monkey for now, Frankenstein! I know what I'm doing. My next step is to bring this into camera raw filter while I'll bring back some contrast. See? <laughs> Look at that. We get that contrast while still retaining that atmospheric haze to sell the scale. Right? Right? Whatever, I like it. Next, I did some smudge overpainting using a texture brush. I'm going to do a video going into more detail on how exactly I do this for artwork, but for now you can check out this video on how I've done it in portraits in the past. It's a similar concept, but not exactly the same as what I've done here. Here I've added a few more color effects using custom actions, color lookups, and curves. To begin giving this the authentic Drew Struzan movie poster look, I've added white outlines around some of the objects. We'll add more to this effect in a minute. First though, some more color work. However, all this working with the color has dulled the red glow of the AT-ATs, so we'll just add that back in. Yeah, that's better. Now I want to add some particles in just to kind of give hints of some snow and battle debris. So here's the first image I'm going to use. Put that on screen and mask it in where I want to see it. And same thing with this image. You'll only see it in front of darker areas since it's white on white, which is how it'd be in real life. Another small tweak to the color again in camera raw. This texture down here by the leg was bothering me, so I just took care of that with the clone stamp. Okay, now's as good a time as any since we're nearly done now to add some laser fire. Using that same glow technique, I painted in some red laser fire coming from a couple of the Imperial Walkers and green lasers from the Snowspeeder. Hardest part of doing this was getting the perspective of the laser fire correct. It's not truly a battle until there's an explosion or a laser impact or something. So because the green lasers are headed right toward the body of the main AT-AT, we can add something there. I used this image of some sparks, turned it green, since a green laser would spark green, put it on the screen blending mode to remove the black background, and smudged it to match everything else. Then added a green glow and some extra sparks. That looks good, but I felt that it was so bright that it was taking focus away from what was meant to be the main focus, the crash and Luke with his lightsaber. So I used levels to just darken it down a little bit. Might not be realistic, but it achieves what I was going for. Artistic liberty and all that. 
While I was at it, I also felt that the green of the lightsaber had been dulled a bit as well from all the color work, so I just brightened that back up. To continue on with the poster look from earlier, contrasting the white outlines around some objects, I added some black outlines around other parts of the objects, giving it a sort of hand-drawn look. Again, just another detail you probably wouldn't notice unless looking up close, but it just adds so much more interest in my opinion. I added one final camera raw filter, and, well, after all this, I still felt like the scale of the main at, -AT just wasn't right. I'd done way too much to go all the way back to change the scale, so I had to just cut out the at, -AT and stretch it just a little bit. Enough to make it taller, but not stretch so much that it looked super obvious. And lastly, some film grain to tie it all together. Get it? Tie? Ugh, I suck. <laughs>